Shalom, balance, paradise, righteousness, all. Back up in the lab. One more again, and I have a special guest with me, a lot closer to home than usual. I thought I'd bring this a little bit more local. And as you can see, I have with me none other than Natalie Graham, the one yeah. and only manager, <laughs> BBC radio presenter, um, and so, so much more, daughter, mm -hmm. uh, sister. Um, we're going to get into the whole, the full aspects. Welcome to the broadcast. Well, thank you for having me. It's not very often I get referred to as special or special guests, so cheers. <laughs> <laughs> we all have a story to tell, and, and, and based upon my rudimentary research and our um, back conversations, I think you're, you have a, an interesting guest story that, that should, should most definitely be told. Well, um, yeah, well, I'll let you be the judge of that, but go on then. <laughs> <laughs> most definitely. So... Um, before we get into, before we jump into the DeLorean and go back into time, mm -hmm. yeah, let's start off with the with 2020 and the um, mm. as I uh, refer to it as the zombie apocalypse. How has yeah. that all been treating you, and how have, has that majorly affected you in any any ways? Um, it has been, I think, as for me as with everybody else it's been uh, it's been interesting just trying to sort of navigate and sitting there from when it all kicked off and thinking in this I mean back in what March in the space of a day uh, within sort of 24 hours essentially the whole world had really been sort of shut down economy and all it was it's just been bizarre um, and um because i'm i'm i mean i'm obviously i'm, I'm not obvious to everybody else that's what they're going to find out but I've, I've grown up in the music industry so i'm i'm sort of in music management um and on one side of the fence because i manage my mom who's jackie graham um my brother's also in the music industry as well so he goes out and performs and it's been it's been difficult to sort of see the impact that it's had um on the music industry and for people in the sort of the creative arts um but on the other side of the fence, because I am a radio presenter as well for the BBC, it's been my busiest year ever. So it's kind of, it's literally been, been like this for me, <laughs> just sort of balancing the scales um, on a sort of on a personal level for my own sort of personal career, which I never imagined that um, I would end up going down this path anyway. But I've, it's been kind of a blessing that, um, like I said, it's given me more shows and given me the opportunity to, to connect with people at home who are, struggling there's so many people who are on their own you would um i mean i only realized through doing radio just how many people have been sort of isolated and even now up until i mean we're in what um sort of you know mid-november this has been since march people who are still um they've you know they've got no one some people have no family and they are literally trying to deal with this themselves so it's just been a very very odd year sort of mixed emotions um I sort of took because I, I mean I'm one of these that sort of I, I'm here there and everywhere and if I'm if I'm not in this country I'm on a plane and sort of LA is is like a second home to me mm. um, and I've not had the chance to get out there this year which is sort of you know I'm, I'm sort of missing everybody out there that's my kind of reset yes um, but I've used the time as well for um, this whole sort of lockdown experience to I suppose reconnect with myself a little bit sort of take the time out to not be a busy fool as I call it and sort of running here there and everywhere it's kind of given you no choice but to just have to stop um because especially when it sort of was the initial lockdown you couldn't go anywhere you weren't allowed my only my only saving grace was being able to go in um to the studios because we have to obviously go in and and, and and do the shows live uh, for the simple fact just in case there's any breaking news and Boris is going to come out with um the next um you know news headlines yes. or addressing the nation so you so have to Natalie be, on that point, so during the, the first uh, lockdown, how yeah. was the work um, environment um, having to social distance going to a radio station? I mean, I would imagine it's pretty isolated anyway, but what extra precautions and how, how did all that sort of work? Well, um, I mean, they're all on, on completely skeleton staff. So, I mean, when you go to, because I, I work from a place called The Mailbox in Birmingham, um, and you sort of go into the offices and there's, there's pretty much hardly anybody there. So when you go in to do the live show, it's literally you 
obviously you're in one booth, you've got the producer that's sort of in the middle booth, um, and it might be that you'll, you can sort of give a wave through the glass to uh, whoever's on air before you, but there's there's no contact. I mean, other than you've got the screen in and everything when you go in that does the temperature check um, that sort of lets you know whether or not you have been successful, you may enter the building. <laughs> um, <laughs> and then, uh, yeah, it, it, it doesn't really impact too much because like I said, we haven't got that... Um, that we're not within any kind of close proximity. It's not as if you're sitting there sharing a studio with someone. So um, they are, they've, they've been very good um, at the, the BBC in making sure that, that sort of they're putting all the protocols in place that they can and then some to ensure sort of, you know, our safety and um, the safety of, of themselves as well. So in that sense, I, I sort of can't complain. I haven't gone in thinking, oh no, um, I'm not too sure about this. Cause I, I mean, I've got to be careful as well. Cause, um, cause of my dad, my dad's sort of in that high risk category, but um, no, feel perfectly safe. And as I said, especially at the start of the, the first lockdown from March, um, it was a godsend for me because while everybody's sort of sitting there thinking, oh my gosh, I am stuck indoors, I'm yeah. going mad, whether or not they're on their own or whether they're with their families and the families are driving each other mad, um, mm -hmm. I was able to at least have that breather um, for a few days a week to be able to sort of step outside um, literally yeah. <laughs> step outside um, and go and do something where I could just sort of almost breathe for mm -hmm. a few hours even if it's just the three hours that you're on air so um yeah I'm very very grateful for that going back to as you say having the ability even if it was one or two days a week to go back to some form of reality in regards to a, a, a work type atmosphere um just gives you mm -hmm. that break from as you say the first lockdown was absolutely crazy I mean the, the, there are people regardless of age who haven't had much physical contact in 12 to 15 weeks I mean that yeah you know it's 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 very tough and I think we're going to find um moving forward the the true impact of of, of what's happened not just physiologically but the, the the mental health of people is really really suffering yeah not, I mean, not just that as well. You, you've got to think in terms of, sort of you know, the, the different generations and how the different generations actually deal with what's taking place. I mean, you've got um, the older generations who have sort of sat there and said, listen, we've been through the war, so on and so forth. We've been sort of sat there while there's literally been mm. bombs dropping. Um, I think that there's there's almost a, I suppose almost, a, I've, 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 from my personal experience and, and a lot of the people that I've been engaged with um, who have sort of contacted through, through radio, um, it's almost as if the, the people of this slightly older generation are sitting there seeing, saying that, you know, these are completely unprecedented times, even when they can make the comparisons to those who have been around back when you did have the wars. But at the same time, there's a certain level of resilience that I've seen from the slightly older generation um I mean even my parents my parents are in their sort of early 60s um and you know they've never seen anything like this but then mm. I think as you go down just as you're sort of saying in terms of people's mental health it's affecting people in so many different ways and then as you get down sort of younger and younger you get to the millennials of which my brother's pointed out recently that I am one I'm on the cusp just I'm about a millennial <laughs> but I'm on I'm on the cusp so um, it kind of includes me but I'm at sort of you know the older end of it indeed um but you've got the the, the youngsters you know who have grown up in a kind of a much more digital era um who are just sort of sitting there and 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 their their lives revolve around after work you know it's the socializing it's going out to the bars it's mm -hmm. going out to the clubs um and even not being able to interact on that kind of a level um i think i've, I've seen it hit a lot more of the um the younger generation um just as much even if not even more so because they they they're sort of sitting there thinking we we don't know how to deal with this yeah. we don't know what to do then you get into the, the the levels of the the kids who are at school whether it's the teenagers or even be, be um who are younger than that who how i mean how do you explain to them what's going on you've got so many different conflicting pieces of information mm -hmm. as well that's being put out there so you know it depends on i suppose what side of the fence people's parents sit on yes. as to the narrative that the that the kids are being taught um but it's had a huge impact on their education. Who would have thought that, you know, millions of kids would be getting taught um, via this, via things Virtually. like Zoom? Mm. It's incredible. It's, it very much so. Um, it, as as you, you've highlighted for, for your own personal journey throughout this period, it's been a kind of a, a balancing act. For, on, on some cases, it's been kind of detrimental, but on other cases, it's been quite positive. Um, so looking at the, the positive element of it, the utilization of technology where it's like, okay, yeah. historically when, when 
we were growing up, for instance, if the schools were shut because, the, you know, the bad weather and the boiler had broken. Snow day. Snow day, exactly. <laughs> They're not going to email anybody because email wasn't even available no, at that point. It exactly wasn't giving that. you physical. Unless you're, yeah, letters to take home to your parents <laughs> in your school bag. Yep. None of that. So, you know. In, in, and in then that... as well, the teachers mm -hmm. having to navigate. The, I mean, I, I know teachers, sorry to cut you, but I know teachers who are, again, sort of in the, you know, mid 50s who don't know about things like Zoom, who don't, they, you know, they're not necessarily as savvy Tech with savvy. technology as what the kids are. Mm. So they're sitting there thinking, how are we going to take, you know, they're having to learn. Yeah. This is the teachers as they're going along. It's, it's, it's a massive upward learning curve. And again, looking, taking positives, because I always try and look at the cup half full. Yeah. So taking the positives from that, the older generation of teachers who have been historically very hand uh, and, well, pen and paper driven, mm -hmm. and now having to embrace the laptops, the, the tablets, and, you know, get involved. And really, you know, from a, a work purpose, it's like, okay, you know, I'm able to maybe maximize a bit more of my time now on a personal level. Yeah. Oh, maybe I can speak to uh, cousin Joe in Australia who I haven't spoken to and actually see them rather than writing these letters again. So yeah, it's, it's highlighting the, the connectivity that we've got um, and really utilizing it as much as we can for the good rather than, you know, just hanging out on social media, yeah. playing games and stuff like that. Yes. I think it's, it's added an element of um, appreciation for, um, I, th I think we all, we all got caught up in this sort of rat race. And um, for me, again, I am one of these cup is half full rather than half empty. I'm just, I always try to be as positive as possible, um, surround myself with good people, surround myself with good things, got all my crystals and I wear my crystals and I'm just, 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 yeah, just as much I do my sage smudging and all that kind of stuff. But again, going back to sort of March for me, because I was always on the move, um, it was it was a way for me to just, it was almost like I said to people before, it's like a reset for the whole planet. Um, I, th I think, you know, the, the, the nature needed it. Um, and just to sort of see, even not seeing all these trails in the sky from all these aeroplanes uh, flying around and everything and just literally crystal clear blue skies, nothing yes. but the clouds. Um, it was just, it was, for me, I was trying to sort of take the beauty from what was going on. And I know that there's, you know, there's a lot of people who have lost people. Um, but it was just trying to see the good. And like I said, for me to give, I think not just for myself, but to give everybody the opportunity to say, listen, maybe this is happening for a reason that it's a kind of way of saying, listen, slow down mm -hmm. and, you know, take a moment to appreciate what you do have. Cause everybody's constantly chasing. We're always sort of, you know, and especially when it comes to social media as well, oh, it's, yeah. it, it can be so dangerous because everybody makes these comparisons and they're looking at sort of, you know, what people are putting up on their Instagram feeds mm. and the pictures and does it look good for the gram and so on and so forth. Not realizing that a lot of the time, if you, I mean, I'm sure you've seen some of these behind the scenes yes. pictures and everything where there's images that are just staged mm. and uh, you know, don't always believe what you see, but everybody's looking and seeing what the next person is doing thinking oh well I haven't got enough um they're doing this so I you know I'm I'm, I'm failing because I'm not at that particular stage yeah. in my life um and it almost becomes they create this sort of competition with other people and it's like you know what life is not a competition we're we're, we're we are all running our own race yes. and we are all at the places that we're supposed to be when we're supposed to be there mm -hmm. That's, that's kind of my philosophy. Excellent point. And I think, unfortunately, based upon um, what you just highlighted, society mm. has been pushed towards this um, externalization of and fulfillment of self rather than yeah. trying to really understand, well, who am I as a person? You know, what do I actually like to do? You know, yeah. what would what would my profession, what would my preferred profession be? Not versus... I want to earn a hundred thousand pounds a year. What profession is going to get me that? And then me working mm. my way to, to that. No one really, well, I wouldn't say nobody, but many people don't really look for full fulfillment. Um, it's these quick fixes. It's this, yeah. oh, they've got a nice, okay, let me, um, let me um, cancel this lease and I'm going to lease me a, 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 an e-pace. Let me do something like that. And, you know, even though I can't afford it, but you know, but I need mm. to have, I need to keep up with the Jones, the Joneses, yeah. as the saying is. Um, 
it's sad it's 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 very sad that we've been it's as almost a, as... that fake it till you make it yes. that's what everybody seems to be on at the minute and it's just mm-hmm. like you don't you know you don't it, it's it's for me I'm I'm trying to be the most authentic version of myself I mean I'm one of these that you know my nails are my own nails no disrespect to anybody who gets sort of the acrylics and everything I yes. used to back in the day but it's just you know I've I've I've, I've I try and be you know my my eyelash I haven't got any false eyelashes on mainly because I don't know how to put them on <laughs> but at the same time I'm just like it's, it's I, I I don't I think we're living in a world now where almost so many people look the same. Everybody's trying to look like somebody else yes. and whether it's certain procedures that they're, they're having done and so on and so forth. And it's just, I'm one of these, it's just like, listen, you are beautiful as you are, whether yes. you're male, female, mm-hmm. um, you know, and, and, and I think that's, that's what it's, it's sort of fundamentally about. It's just getting people to appreciate that. Listen, just know who you are. And again, stop trying to be somebody else. Stop trying, stop trying, because in your own right, you will end up being an influence to um, other people without even realizing it. You don't have to, because otherwise you've just got clones. It's just like clones of people. Um, and it's, it's yeah, it's, it's just strange for me to say. I mean, I'm, I'm sort of, again, like I said, I'm at the older end of the, the millennials. I'm, I'm sort of the big 4-0 next year. Mm-hmm. So I'm sort of, maybe it's just my, my sort of whole perception on life mm. has just changed as I've got older. But I've always been kind of like that anyway. I'm a bit geeky and I'm just one of these, it's like, listen, I can't, I, I don't know my angles and all that kind of stuff. Which is, I'm just like, <laughs> well, I, I really don't care. You know what? <laughs> just me. The, the, the thing is, is when, when, you grew up and when I grew up um, and people before us, it was a pivotal pivotal time in regards mm. to the growth of technology, industrialization. Many things were happening, um, but there was still you as a person growing up, mm. having all these different influences, American culture, British culture, et cetera, et cetera. You mm. still, as a person, wanted to you would find a hodgepodge of of people um, pop stars actors and you would emulate certain elements and create your own look and your own oh, sort completely. of self-image Aaliyah SWV this all is that it. kind of era listen that was me the check shirt <laughs> the baggage, yeah I was I was there that <laughs> I was there don't get me wrong when it comes to that sort of that that um again that influence but that was again from from the music um and that was more so about how you sort of dressed and what your your sense of style was yes. what, what I was drawn to as opposed to wanting to completely look like this person where you could go and get some kind of surgery to enhance different <sighs> features to try and make you look a little bit more like that so um that kind of um the, for me the sort of the hip-hop and the R&B culture then yeah it was all about that kind of the the the, the dress sense because yes. that's what I was drawn to mm-hmm. um but I, again, I, I don't know. I don't know whether it was just that, that things have changed so much now because not just technology, but sort of, you know, the, I can't even say, can you say medical marvels of what they can do nowadays with people's bodies? It's, it's, I guess you could, I, I guess, know. I guess. I mean, let's look at it a cup half full. Yeah, it is a medical marvel, whether it should be done or not. Again, that's a mm. totally separate subject, um, you know, subject and conversation. It's good. Um, we've we've advanced as as a as humanity and as mankind. We have advanced so far forwards, but again, <laughs> when we look at it at, at, in its totality, I think mm. we could like slow down a little bit on some of the advancements that we're maybe doing. Yeah, I, I think everything. That's the thing. I mean, everything's just speeded up now. Yeah. And I, I sort of, I, it's almost like you can't, sort of, you can't keep up. It's, it's, it's kind of overwhelming. Um, but again, that's why, like I said, that's why I think everything that's been going on as well has allowed that kind of reset for people to just stop and think, well, hold on a minute. Do I need that fancy car or do I need that sort of lip filler or <laughs> whatever it might be? Um, to think, well, actually, no, I mean, I know during lockdown as well, even even when it comes to some of the things, especially when um, it came to certain people, and it was just like eyebrows, because I get my eyebrows threaded, yes. and I'm sort of sitting there, I'm just like, do you know what, just let them grow. Yeah. <laughs> it really doesn't matter, <laughs> but then you've got other women, and, well, not just women, some guys as well, that were sort of sat thinking, oh my gosh, I've got to get this done, and it was all about how they looked, because they still wanted to look perfect for the yes. gram, and it's just like, listen, it's not about that. 
don't worry about all of that. Nobody cares. Everybody's sitting at home. It was, I mean, one of the, the best things was the fact, I'm a, listen, I'm a tracksuit and hoodie girl mm-hmm. all day, every day. So I was just like, oh, I haven't got on a pair, pair of jeans. I haven't got to put in heels. I am good right now. <laughs> so <laughs> that be was also a blessing. Yes, yes, be comfortable and be self. There's nothing, mm-hmm. nothing wrong with that. And I think with most, like with most things, it, it comes with um, experience. Most mm. things um, come through experience and also age. You've got to, we can say things and give advice to people at a young age. And, you know, it, generally it's going to be in one ear and out of the other, unless they've yeah. got a high regard for you. Um, mm. It's not until they've experienced the highs, the lows, and they've potentially made those mistakes. They've got to the 30s. They've maybe got to almost 40 and they realize, whoa, you know, that conversation I had like when I was like 19 or 20 with that person, they were spot on, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've always kind of surrounded myself with um, I, th- I think I've always been a bit of an old soul anyway, again, because I've grown up in the music industry. So I was a lot of the time I was on the road with um, with my mom and dad when she was touring. Um, so I, I was sort of fortunate and blessed enough to, to sort of mix with some, you know, some some wonderful people in the music industry. But because I was always around people a lot older than me, it wasn't very often that you had, um, you know, you artists that would have their kids with them. The, a lot of the time, you know, they'd have them with au pairs mm. back home and they'd be, you know, getting looked after and everything. But my mom and dad, um, whenever they could, they would take me with them. So I was growing up sort of in a quite strict environment. I've got my, my mom's got um from a Jamaican background and she was raised by her grandmother and my dad's um, an Irishman. He's sort of one of uh, 14 or 15 kids. Um, So they've grown up in sort of very, very sort of strict environments. Um, And for me, wherever I was, it was a case of right now, sit there, um, and don't speak until you're spoken to. Yeah. Not in not in a horrible way, I but know. it was because of you know this is big people time now. Yes. Um, and they didn't want me to be one of those kind of bratty kids that you know you'd go into the EMI stu- um, offices or whatever and happy straight away. As soon as people would see my mom and dad walk in with me, they'd be like, "Oh God, she's got a kid with her," because they just know <laughs> that some of the other people that would bring their kids in, they were just unruly. They just weren't disciplined. Yeah. Um, whereas me, no, I would sit there, get my little coloring books out or my homework or whatever it was sit there don't speak until you're spoken to and that it got to the stage where my mom would turn up somewhere and they wouldn't even say oh hi Jackie they're just like where's Natalie and I'd be uh, answering the phones at your EMIs <laughs> or the management offices and all this kind of stuff and it was just because I was brought up to be um sort of I suppose you know very uh, very well behaved um but I don't know it's just every it's everything's just it, it is it, it's it's so different now to how it how it used to be I, I i can't i mean again if you say you're sort of similar age to me then you you will probably get it more so yes. um but yeah no there's, there's there's been some good people and again because i've grown up around a lot of older people um i always just remember sort of soaking up as much knowledge, knowledge. As I could, which is one yeah. of the reasons yeah and not they everybody says it sounds cliche when they say sort of knowledge is power but it really is mm-hmm. um and yeah you sort of it's just you get to a point where it's like wow yeah I do remember when you know so and so said this and I've been through there you know when you're in the teens I used to be like a dog with a bone when it came to sort of chasing things or wanting to yeah I want to make my first six figures by this age or so on and so forth and then I think when you're in your 20s you kind of sort of finding your way you don't really know what you want to do sort of you know you want to do this you want to do that you want to do the others by the time you reach your 30s generally for myself anyway I know for a lot of people not necessarily everybody by the time you reach your 30s you you kind of know yourself a little bit more and again you've had that kind of learning experience from in your 20s to think ah yeah don't want to make that mistake again and now as I'm about to sort of step into my 40s next year um I've you know I, I, I feel the evolution that I've gone through to get to that next phase now where even looking and thinking of things like sort of you know eight nine years ago whilst I was in my early 30s thinking mm. yeah still so different um not completely different but yeah. just in terms of realizing what's important what to look out for with people to sort of see whether it's red flags and you can clock certain experiences that yes. you've gone through before and think yeah definitely not going down that road again um and I think just getting to a point where you've got an appreciation for who you are and almost um almost getting to a um an understanding where you know how to respect yourself more you know what your boundaries are mm-hmm. um I think that's yeah yeah that's that's kind of one of the things that I love about being around people who are older even now love being around people who are older than me I just I just like to learn 
definitely. Def growth and developments. Yes. 